Thank you, HC. Um, I want to reiterate all of the thank yous to everyone else as well. Everyone who came, it's a Friday night. You could be a lot, doing a lot of different things. We appreciate that you're here listening to us talk about our art. Um, so my name is Javon Nascimento. I'm a second year MFA student in printmaking here at Pratt. Um, I'm going to start with where I come from. Um, my name is Brazilian. My father's from Brazil. But this is Colorado, where I grew up. Um, and Colorado, for me, represents a lot. It's kind of a land of extremes. You know, this was my backyard growing up. And it's, you know, air and water and altitude, um, light versus dark. And this quality of light, you know, we have 300 days of sun, I think is something that stuck with me as sort of light as a physical rather than an optical phenomenon. Um, and something that you feel and interact with. So I think that that kind of works its way into my work indirectly. Uh, before I get into the work that I've been doing most recently, I'm going to show one piece from last year as kind of a lead-in. Um, this is a series of monotype self-portraits that I was working on. And the way I was creating these was painting wet into wet, um, so making alcohol washes, water washes, and painting uh, Sumi ink or India ink into that. Um, here's a studio shot. You can see where I had the mirror just set up at the desk. And I would sit down and just sort of run through these as a way of kind of capturing this moment in the liquid as it evaporated, um, sort of freezing this moment in time, you know, this opposition between this liquid and solid form. And this caused, as you can see, these sort of various distortions and evaporations, and it also put a very finite time limit on the work that I was doing. Um, and there's a certain sense of randomness and loss of control in these. Uh, and the way I view that is sort of setting up a condition to work against. So setting up the medium and my way of working kind of in an oppositional way as well, where I sort of wrestle the medium, the medium takes control, and I take it back until I kind of find the point of balance. Um, so from there, everything that I'm going to show now was made in 2015, in the spring, summer, or this fall. This was the next piece that I made after those portraits. Um, and although it looks very different, it's kind of one more translation of the prior work. So what this is, is a silk screen print. Um, and what I was doing now was taking the same kind of ink washes to create the textures in this print and work abstractly rather than kind of make a representation of myself. I thought that dispensing the image kind of gave me a lot more freedom and a lot more depth to work with sort of these basic elements of light and color um, and perception that I was looking at. And at this point, I was still working um, very much in the mode of printmaking, making an edition, an uh, edition vernier of the same image, um, kind of changing the way that I was printing it, changing the inks, working very improvisationally, adding sort of another layer of translation to um, the print after I had exposed my imagery onto the screen. So this is what one of those um, Oops, excuse me, sorry, go back there. This is what those ink washes look like as I make them. Uh, this is a time lapse of one of them evaporating, and I'm interested in the way that the liquid kind of fights against itself. You'll see moments where, you know, a certain amount of the alcohol will evaporate and the water will take over and it'll shift um, and move. And it's something that you can't see at the time that you're making it, but I'm left with this kind of evidence that becomes my raw material. And so that is this here, and this is what I'm using to sort of collage and make my imagery and then turn into what you see here, which is the finished print, which is layers of that imagery exposed and printed and re-exposed and reprinted on top of itself. <clears throat> um, and so these next few are still early ones in the series that I was making multiple editions, so I have kind of all of these different variations of the same imagery. And you can see here my hand was starting to come back into this. I was starting to relate to these abstract geometric forms with gesture. Uh, and I think that was one more way of me kind of taking this one step further in that mode of doing something to it and doing something else to it um, until I kind of found this balance that I was looking for. And I think that I was very interested in how these objects, images, whatever you want to call them, float between landscape and portrait and still life, that they live in this sort of liminal in-between space. So I began to take these off of the wall. Um, this is the beginning of a transition that sort of happened over the summer. Because I think that there's sort of a set of expectations when you approach a print on a wall or a painting on a wall, this rectangle, 
Um, and again, I think that now it relates a lot to the screen and the way that we're so mediated to consume information that I was interested in moving these pl planes of imagery around so that you encounter them in a different way rather than kind of walking up to something with an expectation that it's going to tell you something. Uh, I'm very interested in sort of the nonverbal and the bodily interaction and experience with the work. This is a detail shot of that last one. Um, and again, this idea of sort of the digital versus the analog I think is interesting to me too. Not that the process is digital that I'm using, but that I think that the forms appear to approach something digital, something like a flattened out video game or computer rendering. Um, and I think that that reading of the work is available because we're so used to looking through the screen and confronting all of this information, you know, through our phones, computers, whatever. Um, and in a way for me, it's kind of interesting to counteract that, but still have that digital read come up in the work. Um, I've also been exploring how to make these more object-like, more, um, you know, less about the printmaking and the silk screen and the process itself, and more into something unnameable. So this is actually one of the prints that I showed you earlier uh, that I kind of reconfigured, <coughs> excuse me, and turned into a little sort of mini installation on the wall. The wall is painted, and then the print is scored and folded as well. Um, here's a detail, and you can see that I've cut through the print too. I'm interested in these moments where, you know, a hole becomes a shadow, or a shadow appears to be a hole, or the reflection off the print. It's kind of unclear whether it's the light from the paper, the ink, or the light in the room itself, kind of making you aware of what you're looking at. In that same vein, this is a piece that I installed in the uh, All at Once show in the Steuben Gallery here at Pratt. This is a diptych. It's about six, almost six feet wide. Um, it was hung fairly high above the viewer. And again, my hand is starting to come back into this a little bit more, um, and also sort of starting to take into account the wall and the space of the gallery. Here you can see where I kind of painted back into the piece. And I think that this working improvisationally and this sense of play is really important to me as well. Um, I try not to have too many expectations going into making one of these works, and I never titled them beforehand. Here's one more detail, um, and this shows the iridescence of a lot of the inks that I utilize. I like that the object changes and moves and appears to create light as you move around it. I think it's really interesting that the idea of you moving and the way that you're looking can change the object that you're perceiving in front of you. So here's the most recent work that I've done. This is an install shot from our symposium critique last week in DeKalb Gallery. Um, and what this consisted of was these three prints that you see right here. Um, and it's a little bit of a departure from the work before. They are, you know, full bleed prints, well, prints I'm calling them, I also paint back into them, so they're kind of somewhere in between prints and painting for me. Um, but sort of using, rather than the space of the paper as the field that I'm in, the space of the wall and trying to interact with the gallery and make these sort of little windows into a different environment. And my hand was coming back into these a lot more as well, you can see where I painted over. Um, they were also hung fairly high on the wall. Again, I'm interested in this sort of, the way that the light reflects when you move things, but also how these subtle changes in display can affect how you read and look at a piece, and how you become aware of yourself in a gallery. <coughs> this is the last of the three. And as I said, they're fairly small pieces, but I'm interested in kind of scaling that down and entering into an environment. And opposed to those, I had this piece, which for me is somewhere between a sculpture and a painting. Um, and it was very casually sort of presented against this wall, but I like this sort of, again, working with these oppositions, light and dark, and creating this very dense object that appears to exude a light behind it, um, even if it's only reflected in reality. Um, here's a detail of that, and this is paper wrapped around a wooden panel. And you can see the surface here. I'm working almost entirely in black in these works. Um, and I think it's interesting to reduce to that, because as I mentioned a little bit, I'm interested in these kind of oppositional forces, these oppositional situations that we set up in language. And I think that that can be restrictive. To say that something's in black and white is sort of ignoring this whole range in between. I'm interested in approaching that very small borderline in the middle and these sort of liminal spaces within the imagery. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.